let's turn uh, now to Jason Colthorpe, who is live at the shelter that has been set up in town where these impacted families are, are staying tonight. And Jason, that's a lot of people. There are a lot of people, Devin, and just to kind of continue on with what Mara's talking about, I can tell you the efforts to help the people of Gaylord well underway tonight. Let's start with the rescue efforts. We've seen EMS vehicles, just saw another one, some of them racing back and forth here where we are. We're a little east of downtown and a couple miles from I-75. Also, the cleanup effort. If you look down this road here, you can see one of those checkpoints Mara mentioned. And as we rolled into town, we could see at least two big M dot dump trucks rolling into town to help out in that effort. And there's also the humanitarian effort that's ongoing, like here at the E Free Church. As you said, at least 50 people are here tonight that are going to stay here, and they expect that number to grow over the next few hours. People calling okay. about right, exactly water. Like, yes. So is it okay and they can bring yes. Here? They they can bring it here or into the middle entrance. The United Way is going to have a room set up. In his 11 years in Gaylord, okay. Pastor Scott Disler has seen blizzards, but never tornadoes. And that's why when they hit today, he rushed to his mother's house to get her, and then he surveyed the damage. Power poles snapped in half. Um, you basically had to navigate like a war zone. You had to navigate around things just to try to get to her house and try to get her out of the house to get her to my house. And then I kind of went down in town just a little ways and started to see all the damage to the buildings. Didn't even make it down to the worst part. But yeah, it, it was it's like driving around a war zone. His E-Free Church is ideal to help during this disaster. It's big, it has power and Wi-Fi. In fact, the Red Cross was set up and ready to take people in just two hours after the storm hit. The goal here is to have a safe place for people to eat and um, to have a place to sleep in, in a disaster. Um, we want to make sure that um, they're well cared for and then they feel safe. And there's a lot of people in Gaylor displaced right now. Um, there was trailer parks that were leveled, homes that were demolished. So we've just opened up our building, working with the Red Cross and the United Way, kind of a team effort, so that anybody that right now has a need has a safe place. In fact, if they need a ride here, we're even sending out our church vans, our church buses to pick them up. Yeah, and we've seen that van bringing people in here tonight. And it's not just people that have been uh, had their homes devastated or uh, hit by this. We I talked to a family that came in earlier tonight that just didn't have any power. So many people don't have power and they kind of walked me through what happened with their house. They watched two tornadoes scoot by their house in each direction, but they have no power tonight. They came here just to get some food and uh, they headed back to, to relatives. But uh, the efforts to help the people here underway, and as the pastor told me tonight, that's how they're going to get through this. As a community coming together, leaning on one another, opening doors for one another, and they'll make it through this. We're live in Gaylord tonight, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Yeah. Spent a lot of time in Gaylord. It's a great community. It really People is. People are very special. You know they're going to pull together. Uh, not just power that Jason mentioned earlier, Dot Mara talking about cell tower being knocked out. So communications One, are really tricky bunch. too. All right, Jason. Uh,